Hi everybody, Bruce here. And today we're going to explore the recursive backtracking algorithm used in the classic N-Queens program. Okay, let's start off with a clear understanding of what we're trying to accomplish with this program. Here we have a list of 64 elements that have been laid out like an 8x8 matrix. And in this matrix we consider these vertical elements columns. So what we're going to try to do is we're going to try to place one queen in each one of these columns on this board. We're going to place our first queen here in the first position of the first column. We ask ourselves, is this queen safe? Well, obviously it's safe because it's the only queen on the board. But the way that these queens can interact with each other is on the horizontal, like this, or on the diagonal, like this. So if there's any other queen, either in this horizontal row or on a diagonal plane, this queen is not safe. Okay, so here's the rules we're going to be working with. We, we place our queen on the first position of each new column. So we move to our next column and place a queen here, and we of course ask ourselves immediately, is this queen safe? And we see that it's not safe because it's on the same row as the first queen. So we need to move it. So we move the queen here, we can see that it's still not safe because it's on a diagonal. So we have to move it again. Now we're in the third position and we find that the queen is safe in this position. So we go to the first position of the next column, do it over. So if we, if we were to put a queen here, would it be safe? No, it wouldn't because of the row. Would it be safe here? No, it wouldn't because of the diagonal. No, because of the row. No, because of the diagonal. Here it would be safe. Okay, we go to the first position of the next column. No, not safe. Would it be safe here? Yes, it would be safe here because there's no conflict in terms of row or diagonal. See, it clears this down through here. So we go to the next column, first position. Ask, would a queen be safe here? No. 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 Mm. Would it be safe here? Yes, it would be safe here. Okay. Next column, first position. Safe? No. 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 And it's not safe here because it can be conflicting with that first queen. See, it's on that diagonal. So it's not safe there. We have to move it here. Is it safe here? It's not safe here because it's conflicting with this queen on that diagonal. So we move it down here. Is it safe here? It is not safe here because it is conflicting with this queen on this diagonal. So we've run out of places to put this queen on this column. There's no place to put a queen on this column. So what we have to do now is backtrack. And the way we backtrack is we go to the previous column and we make some changes there to try to improve the situation. Now the only thing we can do, we know that we can't go backwards. We have to move forwards. So we move this queen forward, but there's a conflict. We move it forward again, and there's a conflict now with this queen here. Okay, we move it forward again. Now there's a conflict with this queen here. We move it forward again, and are we safe? Let's see, we are safe here. So we'll put that queen right there. Okay, back up now, try again here. Nope, nope, nope. Nope, because it's conflicting with this. Nope, because it's on a row. And it is, no, it's a diagonal here with this queen here. It's not safe there. And it's not safe here because of this. And it's not safe here because of that. So now we have to backtrack again. But now we've taken this queen all the way down to the end. And there's no place for it to go. So the only thing we can do is we can take out that queen. And we have to go back to the previous column and move this queen. So let's move this queen here. Not safe. Not safe. Not safe. Not safe because of this diagonal. Here it is safe. Go back up to the first of the next column, and we start all over again with this column. So you will see that essentially um, 
we need to backtrack every time we hit the end of our opportunities here in each column. We have to go back to the previous column and if that doesn't work, if we run out there, we have to keep going back until we can find a safe haven for each one of these queens. Now if you look at these over here, you see this one's coming down to the end. It's going to have to go back and then this one has to step. Now, see, it had to jump all the way down here to find a safe place. So you can see how many times it's backtracking, trying to find a safe place for those queens. And sometimes it looks like it's not going to be able to do it, but let's just watch it run. There you go. So now it's found a safe place for every single of these eight queens, none of which can be attacked by any of the other queens. So that's the basic premise behind uh, the program. Okay guys, let's take a quick look at the code, uh, but before we do that, let me remind you of a couple things. First of all, um, I've tried to put the source code into the description below these videos. And uh, First of all, some interesting things happen with it, confusing the Dickens out of uh, the HT HTML. The second thing is, it's simply too large. So um, feel free to email me, um, look in the description, I kind of encoded my email address so that the bots don't find me, but uh, feel free to email me with something in the subject line that tells me what you're interested in and I will paste the uh, source code right into the text of the return statement and um, you should have this thing up and running. Apropos to that, I would just like to remind you that uh, the, my first video on this Lisp series, which was called Maze Runner, goes into uh, some detail about how you can download the, uh, the IDE environment and um, you can be up and running in just a couple of clicks. So anyway, uh, before we get into the main routine that describes the algorithm that, that I described manually a little, little while ago, uh, let's talk about just some of the utility functions first that's sort of uh, the grunt work that has to go on under the hood. Here we have a routine that just asked if a queen is safe. So this uh, little routine here fires off a couple other routines. It's called, is it safe? Is, is the queen that's in position X and Y safe? And it says, is, it, is the row safe and is the diagonal safe? It's pretty easy to check to see if there's anything else in that row because, you know, it's going to increment straight across um, that list. But now it gets a little bit more interesting when you get into the diagonals. You really do need to work with the, uh, the X and Y coordinates. For sake of example, let's say that we're looking where the cursor is right here. We want to know if this queen is safe. Well, we check the row. That's easy. But now we have to check the diagonal. One thing that makes it easy is we only need to check to the left, as I said before, because if we've just placed this queen, we haven't put the queens yet over on its right. So all we have to do is just kind of step over to here. See, is there anything there? Step over to here. Is there anything there? Step over to here. Is there anything there? And then we're out of bounds, okay? Then we need to check in the other direction, here, 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 and here, till we run out of bounds. And if we see anything in that location, then uh, we know that we're not safe there. Okay, so that's how that works. So we need to check to see if the if the queen is safe in the row and if it's safe in the diagonal, only on the left. Um, here is our grunt work for getting returning x and converting the list into x and y coordinates, just doing the math on that so we can get something from the x y coordinate. And what we're going to get is either a dash or a q. And the dash is going to mean it's open, and Q is going to mean there's a queen there. So set X, Y, it allows us to write into that array. Okay, print the board and our delay. Those are self-explanatory. So let's go back here to the main routine, which, which I call place queens. So essentially, remember we started on the first column, first position. If we are able to come all the way over and successfully place the last queen in the last column, then we have succeeded, haven't we? So this right here says if if the column number is greater than the limit, in other words, if our next position, because we've been successful up to this point, is in the next position, which is really out of bounds, then return true. This is interesting because this is a recursive backtracking routine, and yet it is very much based on an iteration. So what we're doing here is we are stepping down through the rows, which are basically, what is a row? A row is actually a column number, right? So we're 
basically stepping through eight columns. What we do is we set our queen in the position starting off with zero because we've, we've sent it off here. Place queens starting with zero. So we start off with zero, which is the first position of the first column. Is it safe in this position? In other words, does this position appear safe? But then what it does here is really important. It recurses on the next column. So basically what it does is, says, oh, if, we, if this one's safe, then let's go on to the next column. So it adds one to the column and calls itself. It calls this routine. Now, if you have seen my video on recursion, remember, don't think about it calling itself. Think about calling another routine with the same name, okay? It makes it a little bit easier to understand. So basically what it wants to do is it wants to try the next queen. And if it is successful with the next queen, cool. If it is not successful with the next column, next queen, if you can place the queen here, otherwise backtrack. So what do we do when we backtrack? We erase the queen. We take the dash and we put it where the queue was and come back up here. And now we have set ourselves back a column and we go through this again and try again. So essentially what it does is if it's successful in placing a queen, which will return a true from this place queens, we just go on to recurse into the next column by calling this routine again with the next column number. If we are not successful, with this next column, we erase that queen and we go back and try again. If we're completely unsuccessful in this routine, we will return a nil, but that's never going to happen. Okay, then that's a little background on the recursive backtracking algorithm. I hope that that helped you understand a little bit better how it works. We'll go out here watching the program run zoomed in with uh, with it slowed down a little bit so that you'll be able to watch especially the elements over towards the left you'll be able to see fairly clearly how the backtracking occurs so I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you next time by the way I will be doing an object oriented version of the eight queens coming up so um, I'm looking forward to that and hopefully you'll be able to enjoy it too so take care now bye